Joining us now is Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Secretary, can you give us any more information about what might have happened on that cargo flight with five people on board? Well, obviously, we're all seeing those images, and uh, it's a reminder of, first of all, the professionalism of flight crews that can make it possible for something like that to happen and for everybody to get off of that aircraft safely. FAA is investigating. In these cases, often you will have FAA playing one role, the independent NTSB or National Transportation Safety Board playing another role. I'm not going to get ahead of any uh, investigators who are obviously going to be very early in that process. But what I will say is that any time uh, these investigators investigations of an incident uh, or sometimes even uh, something that just could have turned into an incident that gets caught. Any time that happens, what follows is an investigation and if anything emerges from that about anything in uh, the stages from uh, all the way from the design of an aircraft to its maintenance to uh, choices that were made that day related to that flight. Uh, all of that can be considered, and all of that affects the work that goes on going into the future to keep aviation safe. The track record of U.S. aviation, the fact that flying is the safest way to travel in the United States, is not something that the FAA ever takes for granted, and it's why you have such uh, dedicated, focused resources going into investigating every incident and learning from it. And those statistics are clear. Plane travel is very, very safe. But when you look at these two inst incidents, the idea of being in a plane where during flight a door blows out or, you know, what would have been a door or catches fire, it, it's terrifying. Can you assure Americans that Boeing aircraft are safe? Well, what I can tell you is that no plane is authorized or allowed to fly by the FAA until the FAA is satisfied that it meets every safety condition that it needs to. And if that ever comes into question, then it doesn't fly. And that's what's happening with the specific subtype of 737 MAX aircraft, for example, right now that are grounded and will not return to service until it has been demonstrated to the satisfaction of the FAA that it is safe. Uh, but every time I get on an airliner, which I do every few days, I know that I am kept safe and all the families on board are kept safe by the professionalism of everybody involved in the aviation sector, whether we're talking about the FAA uh, or whether we're talking about those flight crews on board. The, the two airlines most impacted by the Alaska Air incident is, of course, that airline and then also United just because they flew that plane so much. Today, according to FlightAware, Alaska Airlines canceled 20 percent of its flight. United 9%. I, I can't say. Maybe you know better um, how much of that is about the weather. But is there a realistic timeline here at the very least? Uh, do you think the airlines are prepared to deal with, say, upcoming spring break if those planes aren't cleared to fly? What I have to say is that the timeline can only be dictated by, by one factor and one factor alone, which is safety. Look, uh, I think if you've followed our department's work, especially over the last couple of years, you know how focused we are on uh, on-time delivery, pressing the airlines to make sure that there are fewer cancellations and delays. It's why the number of cancellations or the rate of cancellations last year is about 1.2 percent, uh, is the lowest recorded in 10 years. We care about that. but. Uh, it does not matter as much as safety matters. Nothing can be prioritized over safety. So uh, obviously the airlines uh, are adapting. They're doing what they can with the alternate equipment or adjusting their schedules. Uh, want them to be able to, to successfully uh, get people to where they need to go. But uh, that the, the only consideration that can go into uh, when those aircraft uh, go into service is safety. And do you feel, Mr. Secretary, that Boeing has been cooperating fully during this process? What I'll say is that I've conveyed to Boeing's leadership the severity of our concerns, uh, and uh, they have pledged to do everything necessary to uh, make sure that anything that is found is fixed. But uh, that's not something where, where uh, we just go off of pledges. Uh, there is a, an extremely rigorous process taking place with regard to these specific aircraft, and more generally, FAA is reviewing the, the process uh, and the procedures, making sure that the system that we have is adequately uh, meeting the needs. Uh, you know, uh, the way it works is that the FAA uh, lays out standards, very high standards. Uh, the FAA is responsible for publishing and, and updating those standards. The uh, manufacturer is responsible for meeting them. And then when it comes to maintenance, obviously, the airlines have responsibility too. Making sure that there are the right checks and balances on that process is something that is always subject for continuous improvement. Again, 
we never take for granted the safety record of U.S. aviation. It's just an astonishing fact that uh, right now, if you are watching this program, this interview right now, sitting uh, on board an airplane, uh, you are safer than almost any other context that we could imagine you uh, sitting watching this interview. That didn't just happen, and that's not something that, that you can think of as a sort of destination, that we've arrived at the destination of safety. Every incident, uh, every potential incident, every question that gets raised is caused to go back, continuously improve that process, and maintain what it takes to have millions of flights uh, travel every year, land safely, and everybody get to where they're going when they need to be there, and again, most importantly, uh, to get there safely. Well, I understand um, that today is your birthday. I wonder if uh, maybe you're going out partying with Joseph Goss and Penelope Rose and maybe even let your husband come along or uh, any plans this weekend? Thanks for asking. I got to tell you, I was watching Congress closely when today was the uh, uh, day when our funding was set to expire. So really all I wanted for my birthday was a fiscal year 24 budget. Uh, we got a continuing resolution. I'll settle for that. And uh, I am looking forward to some family time tonight. Thanks for asking. Secretary Pete Buttigieg, happy birthday and thank you for the time today. Much appreciated.